What's up, guys? It's your boy Dom, and welcome back to Dom Up Cuz. And, uh, I'm back. Oh man, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a whole month. I'm very sorry. It, um, things happened that weren't in my control. You know, I had a big ice storm come through my area and knock out my power for two weeks. I had to stay in a dang hotel, couldn't record no videos. Then I had school. We just started the second semester, and yeah. Stop the so, cap. We're back. And before we get into the video, man, remember to like, comment, and subscribe to join the ride and be with your boy, Don. And before we get into the video, once again, I want to thank Swoop the Goat and Petrie, bro. Um, they have really fire channels. They some homies I met on Discord, man. Go, I'll leave their channel link in the description below. Yeah. All right. So if you could tell by the title of this video today, man, it's going to be about Isaiah Thomas and this is episode one of a 10 episode series where I'll be going through my top 10 of the greatest NBA steals of all time in the draft of course all right so Isaiah Thomas king of the fourth five foot nine short king man um Isaiah Thomas growing up in the Washington Seattle area when he played in high school he was only a three-star recruit but he did play for in college and he did play for Washington and he was able to put up 16 points per game his entire college career for three years. And that was a very that's very good. You know, you would think somebody like him, somebody averaging 16 points per game um, in college will be able to be drafted in at least the first round or before or like a pick after the second once the second round starts. However, that was not the case. Um, that was not the case, and he was drafted dead last, pick number 60. Yeah. And many people don't even know that, but he was drafted dead last. And many, I feel like the reason why is because he was five foot nine, because there weren't that many successful five foot nine players especially like like Muggsy Bowes, I guess you could call him successful. Spud Webb, I guess you could call him successful. But there weren't really players of his height or stature to be that successful in the NBA. And I think this was a this was in 2011. So this was before the age of the three-point shot. You know, this was before everybody started going to the three-point shot. This is when everybody was looking for the next Shaquille O'Neal basically that's that's when it started because I think the three-point shot era started in like 2013 2014 2014 2015 and to this point so in Isaiah Thomas is very solid look rookie season very surprising rookie season he was able to average 12 points per game it's 11.5 but I'm averaging up because I'm pretty biased <laughs> 4.1 assists per game he was able to put up 44.8 percent from the field 37.9 from three and free throw percentage was 83.2 percent and his effective shooting was 51 percent that would that's very nice very nice solid rookie season and that won him all rookie 2011 2020 2012 all rookie so very good numbers by isaiah thomas and it looked like a promising career you know promising career in 2012 20 in 2012 2013 he averaged 13.9, which was an improvement, four assists, field goal percentage was 44%, and his three-point percentage was 35.8. Very good numbers once again. Now, this is when he took it up. A next step. This was his next step. This was his last year before he was traded to the Phoenix Suns, and he turned up this season. He averaged 20.3 points that season. Six assists, which is a career high, two career highs already, 45% from the field, a career high, um, 34.9% from three. That was down, but he was shooting more, most likely. But he was traded that season for somebody named Alex Oriaki. Who? Exactly. Who is Alex Oriaki? How could you trade Isaiah Thomas for Alex Oriaki. Now, if I'm not mistaken, in his last season before he was traded, he was averaging 16 points per uh, game when he was with uh, Sacramento before he was traded. Why would you do that, Sacramento? Like, really? Why would you do that? I don't know why they did that. 
I was really dumb. And that shows how bad the Sacramento Kings front office is. Just saying. Now, in 2014-2015, he was traded again to Boston. And in Boston, he averaged 19 points per game, 5.4 assists. And he only... And that was, that was, once again, very good numbers again. Now... This is when he started turning it up for real in Boston. Like, this is when people were like, oh, shoot, this guy about to be an all-star, superstar, maybe even a um, per perennial all-star, you know? Next, in the next season, the 2015-2016 season, he was able to get, with Boston, 22 points per game, 6.2 assists a game, field goal percentage was 42.8, three-point percentage was 35.9, and his efficient, effective field goal percentage was 48.8, he was shooting a lot, probably, so that's why his his shooting numbers were down, but that's understandable. You're shooting more, and you're becoming the number one ball handler on the team. Now, in the next season, this guy, yeah, this was when Isaiah Thomas was on everybody's radar. Like, this guy's about to be a perennial all-star. He's about to be one of the best players we've known, probably the best short player we know. Um, he In... 2016-2017 with the Boston Celtics he was able to put up 29 points per game almost 30 should almost MVP almost MVP assist per game is 3 he had 3 point assists per game his field goal percentage was 42.8 and his 3 point percentage was 35.9 but unfortunately late in the season he had a very bad hip injury and that's where his career took a turn Now, in the 2017-2018 season, he was traded from Boston to Cleveland. In Cleveland, he averaged 15.2 points per game, 4.8 assists per game, field goal percentage, career low, 37.3. And he only shot, unfortunately, a career low, once again, 29.3% from the three. Um, many people said his move to Boston was, was a disaster from the beginning, like, I, I remember that season. I was like a big LeBron fan that season. I was rooting for Cleveland, even though they freaking lose every single NBA Finals. I, for some reason, I saw Isaiah Thomas in the corner just waiting to shoot a corner. He was looking like P.J. Tucker or Eric Gordon. And I was like, yo, that's that's crazy. Then he was then he was waived that season with from the Cleveland Cavaliers, and then he was signed by the Lakers. Then he was waived again, and he only played 32 games that season. I think it was like 15 for the Cleveland Cavaliers and 17 for the Lakers. <sighs> Man, that's when his career really took a downturn. In 2018-2019, he was signed by the Denver Nuggets. He only averaged 8.1 points per game. He only had two assists per game. He had another career low of 34.3 from the field. Another career low of 27% from the three-point line. Career low in all categories, especially in, um, especially in games played. It was it was sad. It was a sad time for me even being an Isaiah Thomas fan, you know. it was I was pretty sad. And then in 2019-2020, last season, he was signed by the Cleveland Cavaliers. I mean, not Cleveland Cavaliers, what the, the Washington Wizards. And he actually had better numbers. He averaged 12.2 points per game, 3.7 assists per game. Um, his field goal percentage was 40.8. His three percent three point was 41.3. And his he played 40 games that season. But then again, he was waived. Now, it's been a few months since the last time he played in the NBA. And somebody on Twitter said, I wish you could play in the NBA. Woo -dee -woo -woo. But I'm paraphrasing here. I don't know exactly what he said. But in terms, he basically said, my time in the NBA is done. But hope. There was hope. There was hope. Um, a few weeks ago, he declared that he will be playing for Team USA in the FIBA quarterfinal in the FIBA tournament. If you don't know what the FIBA tournament is, it's basically like every basketball team around the world, like every national basketball team around the world, would be playing basketball to win the international title. It versus the Bahamas, right? Versus Baham the Bahamas, he at he scored nineteen points. He scored 19 points 
in his first game ever back playing professional basketball, which is a look up maybe to him possibly returning. And he even said that he's back to form and that his hip and he feels like he was moving like he used to, you know, because after that hip injury, he things went downhill from there. He, he wasn't moving right. He his whole game took a hit from that. Um, but then again, in versus Mexico, he only scored nine points. But it is his second game back playing professional basketball. So hopefully this looks like a, uh, an NBA return for Isaiah Thomas, even though he said he might be done with the NBA. But um, liking, like this video if you enjoyed it, man. It's been a long time since I've said this. But man, remember to like, comment, and subscribe to join the ride and be with your boy Dime. And um, in the comments below, tell me who do you think is the biggest NBA steal and if NBA, and if Isaiah Thomas can make a return to the NBA. And also, let me ask you a question. How can you like the video and not like and subscribe? Peace out, 100.